hired outside counsel to lead an investigation after a Sports Illustrated report detailed a hostile work environment for women. In the story, former team president Terdima Ossery was accused of inappropriate conduct during his 18-year tenure with the team. A reporter for the team's website also accused of two incidents of domestic violence, including one against a female co-worker. Dirk Nowitzki, who has spent his entire 20-year NBA career with the team, said he was disgusted by the allegations. It's tough. It's uh, very disappointing. It's, it's heartbreaking. Uh, um, I'm glad it's, uh, it's all coming out. Uh, it's, um, I was disgusted when I read the, uh, the article, obviously, as, as everybody was. Um, I was shocked. Uh, about some of the stuff and so just uh, yeah really really uh, disappointed that uh, that our franchise that, that my franchise that stuff uh, stuff like that was going on I think Mark is gonna is gonna step up here and um, and, and find answers and um, we as a franchise obviously and uh, we feel we feel bad for for the victims and for what happened for to some of these uh, some of these ladies uh, that is, like I said, uh, truly truly disgusting. And um, our our thoughts and prayers are definitely with uh, with some of these victims. The NBA says it will closely monitor the investigation. For more on this story, we send it back to First Take. Thank you so much, Stephen A. This is just a lot right now, and it keeps getting worse. And now we know Mark Cuban was aware of much of it. How should we look at him now? I don't know how much we, we, we were. I, uh, well, the Sneed said, incident. Sure, the Sneed yes. incident, yes. He, he was aware of it. He, he, he hired him, he hired him, kept him on the staff. Uh, that was a mistake on his part, which he's openly uh, acknowledged. And, you know, for people that look at Mark Cuban uh, with a raised eyebrow, that's fair based on his acknowledgement, his admission. Uh, as it pertains to Dedema uh, uh, Ussery, yeah. Ussery uh, there's just listen. He has come out with a statement denying the allegations that have been leveled against him. We have, we owe, we, we, in the interest of fairness, we have to say that. However, it doesn't look good for him at all. And it's, 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 if Mark Cuban really, really has a problem here, it's as it pertains to the Dima Usri. You can make a bad call. You can make a bad judgment call. He got one side of the story from the former Mavs.com writer and didn't investigate it, didn't, it wasn't thorough enough. So you dropped the ball, the ball of neglect and what have you. And whatever level of accountability people think he should have for that, that's fine. But in the case of Ussery, 18 years yeah. of scaring the living hell out of women to the to point clear, where... They, Cuban didn't com comment on that he because did not. under investigation. That's right, he yeah. didn't comment. But see, that's where the Pandora's box is really going to be open. You made a bad judgment call with the Mavs.com writer. That can happen with any boss in any line of work or what have you. But that's one incident. What you can't escape is when a person is a, a, a serial harasser, per se, where it spans 18 years and... If it's found that you were aware of this, that you were made aware of this, and you repeatedly ignored it, and remember, there was an investigation that went into us re back in, 19, in, the 19, in the late 1990s. And so this is something that Mark Cuban had to be aware of. I want to give the man the benefit of the doubt because I know how much the Mavs organization means to Mark Cuban. I know how much that basketball team means to him. And, the, and, the, and one of the females that was quoted in the SI.com article they came out and said the locker room was a refuge because you walked in there and you were treated with decency and respect and you never had a problem with the basketball side of things. Well, anybody that gets around Mark Cuban, even reporters, when we go and talk to Mark Cuban, he's usually around the team. Mm -hmm. He's usually running on the stairmaster or he's somewhere around the players and the team. Yeah. You know, not that he doesn't know business, not that he isn't around anybody else, but that's where you usually see him. So, again, yes, if, if, I was read that I read that he's very hands-on. Well, he's a very hands-on owner and that he's actually a control freak. Well, I you know, you you've heard that. Yeah. But again, I've also heard that 
it's really about basketball, and that's what he prioritizes. I'm not trying to give a pass by any stretch of the imagination. What I am simply saying is, is that I need to hear more before I engage in condemnation mm -hmm. towards Mark Cuban, who I know cares about the organization, cares about his players, and usually doesn't mind delegating responsibility. He's particular yeah. about who he picks. Mm -hmm. But once he picks you, he allocates that responsibility to you and lets you do your job. I don't know, but it's, if he knew about this and he didn't do anything, then you know what? The dominoes will fall, and rightfully so. Here is, I think, Molly, you put your finger on it. Yeah. Here is, at the very least, the perception issue yeah. that Mark Cuban has, and it's a serious problem at this moment. Mm -hmm. His brand, as it were, is hands-on. Yes. Now, Stephen A., you're saying you heard he wasn't aware, and it, but it's tough to now reconcile this kind of idea and image he's put forth of, as a hands-on guy who is you know, intimately involved with the organization, and suddenly he has no idea that a pattern was going on with a top executive for eight years years is that possible and I then so. and and by the way i i think the really the most underreported part of this story is the head of hr buddy pitman yeah. who was hired according to the sports illustrated piece to save uh osiri from himself but pitman's cubicle apparently was within earshot according again to the si story of osiri's office so if someone came with a complaint to pitman they were afraid it could be overheard Furthermore, um, one woman was quoted as saying, I leaned in so much in terms of complaints, I almost fell over. Nothing was done in, in what seemed like forever. Pittman apparently was very vocal about where he stood in terms of his religious and political leanings as it relates to issues such as, again, according to the SI item, this is the head of HR. A very. Mm -hmm. This te seems to me to be the real problem. If you had a competent head of HR, then this maybe gets dealt with. But the head of HR is, is well, letting everyone know where he mass. stands on issues like, like, wait a minute, abortion, yep. immigration, how he bristled at the idea of the acceptance of Jason Collins mm -hmm. as an openly gay player in the league. So people, male and female employees alike, according to the article, didn't feel comfortable didn't feel going to HR what? with complaints. And I think there, that's supposed to be a fail-safe, and it exacerbated mm -hmm. the problem, it seems. Well, one thing I just want to add, Stephen A., well, this shows that he has a poor judge of character because he picked these people. Right. And there's multiple employees that he hired like Snead, like Pittman, and even if he's letting them do their job yeah, after yeah, the fact, he's hiring yeah, the yeah, wrong yeah, people. Yeah, that may be true, but let me tell you something right now. Then a whole bunch of people deserve to lose their job in corporate America, because let me tell you something. I don't know of a job that can vouch for the characters of individual. When you say, you might look at a police report, you might make sure that there's nothing salacious out there, but outside of that, you're judging folks based on their competence in terms of, okay, I'm hiring you because this is the job that I need done and whether or not you can do it. You're not anticipating in a lot of situations that somebody is just despicable. I get that, but two so, decades. Stephen well, again, that, that's what I'm saying. Two decades with Tredema, well, come and on. Stephen well, A, on, and hold, Stephen hold A, on. my point. Hold on, hold on, because I want to make sure everybody understands where I'm coming from. I'm not trying to give anybody a pass here. Mm -hmm. if, you, if Mark Cuban knew something, he has to be held accountable. What I'm saying to you is this. The Mark Cuban that I know, yeah. he's the kind of person that the slightest thing, he wouldn't hesitate to get rid of you. See, that's where I'm struggling with all of this. Mm -hmm. the, 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 the mere notion that you could jeopardize what I've built here in Dallas, you got to go. That's the Mark Cuban that I know. Now, does that mean that he would advertise company business yeah. and put it out there to compromise the brand? with Snead. He had the domestic violence incident, well, and then he kept him on. Well, wait a minute. And, like and I said, partner. that's an isolated situation. What I'm saying to you is that with us, Ari, 18 years, this stuff was going on. It's hard to believe that Mark Cuban didn't know. I understand that. What I'm telling you is the challenge for all of us that cover the NBA is we know Mark Cuban to be an in-your-face, unapologetic kind of guy that would ax you in a heartbeat yeah. if he wants to. For, that's I mean, the it, problem just that here. And that's the problem here. Just not right now. But, that's the problem here, guys. Sexual assault issues. He's How not taking does Mark that approach. Cuban how does Mark Cuban, uh, sorry for interrupting, but how does no. Mark Cuban negotiate this situation in terms of his brand even? This is a crisis he needs to, he, I'm sure he's trying to overcome, right? He'd like to remain an NBA owner. He would like to keep a reputation as a good person intact. And yet also he's cultivated at the very least, if it's not true, this brand this. that he's hands-on and yeah. aware of things. Well, if he's hands-on and aware of things, mm -hmm. then... 
How do you reconcile that with what happened? And that's you why, guys, I go yeah. to not only the hire, which was apparently a mistake, and the deaf ear, multiple but the head of hires, HR. Max, multiple the head hires. of HR was a serious mistake. The head of HR, the person who's in charge of HR, has to be someone that people feel comfortable going to and talking about issues in the workplace, not someone who they're afraid to talk to because either the boss is going to find out or they think they'll be judgmental about their claims based on their well, religious or political real views. Couple That's things, a real problem. Couple of things real quick. Dirk Nowitzki said what he said. Rick Carlisle with his profound uh, statement said what he said. You can tell while in the midst of declaring how disgusting and unfortunate this is, also how protective they are of Mark Cuban. It's not just because he's the owner. It's because they're, they're, they're finding it hard to believe that, wow, how could this have happened under his watch? Something's not right here because that's not, that, that's not the well, Mark Cuban we know. They said it was disgusting. They weren't really protecting no, Mark Cuban. No, no, I'm not saying, I'm saying this statement was supportive, word of supportive, protective, whatever. Let's not dissect it too much okay. because it's, cause I'm losing my points. What I'm saying is they're, they're literally supportive of Mark Cuban in their own way if you read between the lines of what they're saying because they find this hard to believe. But ultimate indictment yeah. against Mark Cuban and the, and the Mavs to me comes from Under Armour, because Ussery lasted a couple of months there, and he was gone. Yeah. Now, how is it that he's working for you for 18-plus years, and, and this happened, and somebody comes along and brings you on board, and in two months, They're able. They, get, they get you up out of there. Listen, at the end of the day, if you want to be the hands-on owner, you want to be the face of the franchise, you can't just be there when you're hoisting trophies. You have to be there when there's these kind of crises and act on them as well. We'll leave it there. Coming up, to play or not to play, that is the question for Kawhi Leonard. But how does this whole ordeal make the Spurs look? The fellas will debate it. Up next, is Doug Peterson disrespecting the man who helped him win the Super Bowl? Nick Foles. Will Kane joins the debate desk for that. Don't go anywhere.